So to confirm, a couple of ways to confirm that this is working. I've plugged in my device. There were pop-ups at the bottom that said installing driver. If it says everything installed properly, it's probably working. I would confirm also by right-clicking computer, going to properties, then device manager. In my case, mine says Android device, Motorola ADB interface. For, for other people I saw, yours might have said Samsung ADB device, Huawei ADB device, so it looks like people's devices is working. If you checked out one of my devices, go ahead and plug it in if you haven't done so yet. And then the way we use it to test fully that it's working is in Visual Studio. But it doesn't show in device manager. It says Android Compass and ADB interface. Android Composite. OK, that's, I think that's what it's going to say, not Nexus. But I think it's going to say Android Composite. OK, so the way then we, uh, we will continue to see if this is all properly set up, especially on your device. Let's start Visual Studio. So on your desktop, you'll see Visual Studio. We saw it last time. Go ahead and double click it. It will ask you to sign in with a Microsoft account. Last week, uh, we either created an account or we signed in. Remember, you can sign in with a Hotmail address or an Outlook address or a Skype address or Xbox. So take a moment to sign in. Remember, our computers have deep freeze, so uh, everything will get erased once the computer restarts. That way you can be safe that whatever you've signed in with will get erased when you restart. Before I leave, I turn off all the computers, so the inf your information should be erased. Go ahead and sign in. If you don't have an account, you will have to create a process of, of signing up to create an account. Visual Studio is free. But it does ask you to sign in with a uh, with an account. How many of you tried to set this up at home on Windows? over the weekend. Okay, no hands up. Okay, minus 10 points for everyone. You should be trying this at home. 10 points for you, Mansoor. Thank you for trying. It takes four hours. It does. It takes yeah, a while. I have to grab the coffee. Exactly. Two coffees. <laughs> it, does, it does depend on many factors, and I have seen it taking a long time, mostly. So try it at home if you've got a Windows computer, because it's great to do it in class where I've got computers ready to go. But if you've got a, if you want to do it at home, you're going to need to do some setup. See, that was a trick question. Mac. So we definitely try it on Mac. We haven't gotten very far. We'll have lab time at the end of the day also to try to work it out. So that was my second question. Anyone try to do it on the Mac at home? A few people. Anyone succeed at home on the Mac? So there we go. It works. So it's doable. It's doable. It just takes effort and time and setup. So we'll have lab time, of course, at the end of the day. If you've got your own Mac or your own Windows laptop, bring it. We can take a look at it and try to figure out any of the quirks. And we usually can. As I've said, I've taught this class for, for four years now, and I have people that they it doesn't seem to be working. They bring it in. We tweak a few things, and then it works. Unfortunately, sometimes there is, there is the example that people try everything, and I try everything, and we just can't get it to work. And the failure point can often be the type of device, not your computer, but the device. The device, the great thing about Android is that it's open source and anyone can, can change it. The bad thing about Android is that it's open source and anyone can change it. So what happens is Motorola changes Android a little bit. Samsung changes Android a little bit. Huawei changes it. ZTE changes it, Pantech, all of these companies, they change it a little bit. And some of them change it enough that they deactivate the ability for us to use it as a developer. So the big names, Samsung, Motorola, LG, etc., those work really well, although they're a little more expensive. You know, the, tw the $20 prepaid phones, those are probably running a very modified version of Android. Those are often the ones a little harder to set up for Android development. 
but bring your stuff and we can try to figure it out. Yes? Excuse me, for the homework you said, uh, there is two, three steps. Huh. When we get the devices, we should stop it or we should do the other. Because on page two, or the middle of page two, we get the device and we see the I, I, I sell the device and that's all. Check it for iPhone. Huh. Uh, I couldn't follow up. We should do the other devices as well, or we should stop at that point. Well, there was a step to either do virtual device or real device. Virtual device. Either or that you want to do. If you have a real device, I would try to do the section of real device. But I have a section on virtual device if a person doesn't have a real device. So it's one or the other. Here in Visual Studio, again, the project we worked on last time is gone because of deep freeze. So we'll create a project again empty. Um, today, again, I think we're not going to save what we could, what we create today. I don't think we're really going to keep it. That's okay. We'll see how far we get. We, we are eventually, of course, going to bring in what we did last month and then put it into a real project this month. We're not quite there yet. We're still kind of figuring out the software, the code, all of that. So let's go to File, Menu, New, Create a Project. You don't have to use the one from last time. I don't, doesn't matter. You could if you want to, but I'm going to use a new project, File, New. From here, we're working with a JavaScript project, a blank app. Where are we saving at? You could select to save it in your flash drive if you want. If you don't change the location, it's going to get saved in the documents folder of your computer, which will disappear if you don't take it with you. So I'm going to put this on my flash drive. Not really necessary, but I guess I'll do it. If I can't find my flash drive, never mind. So I'm going to put it on the desktop. That will be good enough. On the desktop, I'll create a new folder. I'll call it test2. We did test one last time, test two. So I'll call this test two. I'm just saving the project somewhere. I'm naming it test two. The solution is called test two. A solution is filled with many files. All of those files will be found under that location. And name here is going to be the name of your app, which can be changed later. Go ahead and click OK. Once this finishes, the ultimate way then to confirm that your device works is to run the project on your device. So eventually when it loads, at the top it says run in the simulation. So if you didn't get a device today, you'll just simulate That'll be fine. You have these other emulators that you can install. No, not necessary, but we've got these simulators. I have a real device I plugged in. You have a real device. Switch it to device. I want to run this project in a device. Let it pop up. Let it uh, try to connect for a moment. It should then say you're trying to run on a device. Question. Device disappeared? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check you one moment. Device is there. I'm going to click the green Run button. It's then going to take a little moment to process and compile the project. Keep an eye out on your device. You may get a pop-up on the device that says Allow Debugging. I would then turn on the check mark that says Remember Yes and click OK. Now what I'm saying right now is in the handout, just to remind you, the handout inside the MAD2 folder, it's the handout of Dev Platform, uh, how to number one. So just to pull that up for a moment, if it's not working. Uh, so it'll take a moment to process, it'll set things up. Again, starting on Thursday, 
uh, I would recommend you come into class, you start Visual Studio, you sign in, and you have it compile, you have it run.